Now let us study uh, resolution proof system for first order logic. We have seen refutation proof systems before. Let's remind ourselves what refutation proof systems are and how we can use resolution as a refutation proof system for our first order logic. So we assume that we have a set of formulas in the left hand side in this uh, statement which was treated as conjunction of formulas. Remember that, right? This is conjunction of these formulas should prove this formula F. So conjunction of CNF formula is also a CNF formula. So if we have only CNF formula in the left hand side, then we can treat as a one giant CNF formula implying other CNF formula that may simplify our view of the proving process. Let us suppose we ask to derive that sigma proves f. What do we do? We assume sigma is finite. We can relax this condition due to compactness of first order logic. We will convert a conjunction of sigma and not of f and turn into a first order clauses called sigma prime. And we apply the refutation proof system on sigma prime. If it gives us false, then this original statement was derivable. Now, now how we will build a resolution proof system for our sigma prime? So there are two steps we needed. One resolution which very much like a proposition logic and new thing has come up with unification which we have seen in the previous lecture. Okay? So what was resolution? Resolution was like this. Okay, So you have a f or c and not f or d you can derive c or d this f and not f get cancelled and then union is applied. Yeah? So that is the essence of resolution. However, there is a complication in first order logic. You can have variables in your first order logic and these variables may, may not be same across clauses. So therefore, you may not be immediately able to apply the resolution. For example, you have these two clauses in which you have uh, not PZZ in PXFY. Okay? So you can see that these two clauses are two different literals. However, they are unifiable literals. Okay? So x can be mapped to z and the fx can be mapped to z and then this whole unification can result you as some, some mapping between variable x, y, z and then you can make them equal. Okay? So uh, if we can unify using unification, then you can apply the resolution. But now the question comes, how do we apply uh, unification in our clauses. Okay, so we were unifying terms earlier. Now I am unifying atoms. That looks weird. So let's we will think about it. Uh, is substitution a valid operation for derivations? I mean, like you know, if we have some clause which is for all variable, you know, all the variables are universally quantified. Suddenly you take a variable replaced by another term. Is it allowed? Yeah, and not only one variable you're doing for multiple variables at the same time. Is it an okay derivation? So that uh, we need to think about. Uh, the third point is that uh, what is the meaning of the variables across clauses? If same variable appears in two different clauses, what does it mean? Are the same variable or the different variables? Uh, how their unification works. So we need to think about this third matter also. Okay. So first, let's take the issue one by one. Unification of atoms. We can lift the idea of unifying terms to unifying atoms. Simply treat a predicate as a function and then you are set. You can just apply any unification algorithm. For example, if you want to unify this guy to this guy, you simply, uh, what do you do? You say, okay, if X should be equal to this guy, this guy should be equal to this guy, can we unify? Okay. And if you do that, then you will get this map. X should be mapped to Fy, Z should be mapped to Fy, and then you are done. After ap applying this unification, we obtain this uh, these terms. Now, now let's look at the second issue. So, so we will go by an example. Okay. So we know that the following derivation is valid. Okay. What is this following derivation? Let's suppose I give you for all x, y, f, x, y. We can replace each letter by a term. Let's say t1 x, y, t2 x, y. Okay. And then we can apply universal quantification again. This was given to you as an exercise in um, previous lectures. 
you can check that uh, these two proof steps are satisfying the, the conditions side conditions given to you in the earlier lectures therefore the following derivation in our clauses are sum i give you a clause it has implicit universal quantifiers remember that we don't write universal quantifiers and you simply apply a substitution the resulting thing is also okay so therefore uh, you don't need to worry about what substitution is allowed what naming is allowed doesn't matter you just apply any substitution it is going to go over it is going to work the following derivation is a valid derivation let's suppose i give you for all uh, px or qy and then the sigma is y maps to x so i can simply say px or qx this is guy okay. so implicitly there was a universal quantifier xy now this is for all x okay so just keep that remember remember that there's a universal quantifier setting in front of all the clauses the third issue the variables across the clauses how do we make sense out of them okay the so universal quantifier distribute over conjunction that was the fact so if so we can easily distribute the quantifiers and scope only each clauses so no quantifier scopes across clauses so the variables appearing across clauses are not the same club variables even if we write the same name for example if i give you this uh, formula uh, it's wrong way to write it you should just simply distribute it okay so you get this uh, distributed form in which you have a w appearing twice okay and you can say that you know they are different variables right so therefore we may view the variables occurring in different clauses as different variables even if we use the same name because if you each time you start writing different name you run out of the name whole notation becomes very cumbersome uh human readability goes down okay so therefore uh, for human readability we reuse the same name but uh, uh, algorithmically or when the computers analyze these these clauses they treat them separately so please pay attention it's a big source of confusion okay so when you're doing unification and trying to do refutation like refutation proofs this can confuse you